Hello, I'm Scott Manley, and uh, if you play Kerbal Space Program as much as me, you will uh, end up with a map that looks something like this, full of debris, like discarded spaceships, and uh, other stuff. So, I have come up with a solution. Actually, that's not true. I have downloaded a solution from the forums. A solution which is a little more interesting than going in and deleting my persistence file. No, um, on the forums, if you look, there is a, an airborne laser system which you can mount, and you see me testing it here while in flight. You press the zero key on the keypad and it will fire it. Uh, the keypad also controls it in various other ways. Of course, we're just getting this up into orbit and we'll uh, test it uh, after we do stage separation here, which will happen just about now. So now, uh, if I press the 7 key, I can uh, target things and then hold 0 to uh, fire it. Now you see that the lasers heat up very quickly. And of course, that's to stop you just holding the button down all the time. Because uh, otherwise, it would be rather easy. Uh, what it does in the game is that uh, when uh, whatever's being targeted by it has its temperature raised until it uh, exceeds the thermal tolerances. That means that it is possible for some parts to be configured so that they are essentially immune to the laser because the laser will break down before it. But, uh, you know, in a reasonable environment, you can pretty much destroy any vehicle in the game that's built with stock parts. Now, of course, uh, when we get up into orbit, we have uh, our, our next task is to try and rendezvous with all these things. And uh, this design at least has a good uh, two and a half tanks of fuel. So I'm going to be pretty aggressive rendezvousing with this first piece of debris just as a, a test target and you see me uh, just you know turning the vehicle around and thrusting a lot faster than I need to because uh, you guys don't like to wait because of the way the game works um, physics is only simulated for objects within two and a half kilometers so regardless of how fancy you, you say the laser is you still have to get within two and a half kilometers so that the object on rails gets displayed or gets loaded into the physics engine and then at that point you can destroy it uh, maybe at some point they will remove the two and a half kilometer limit i would certainly like it because i'm one of those people maybe i mean i don't want it to be huge but i'd certainly like it to be a little further than that kind of disappoints me that when i drop stuff in the atmosphere uh it won't hit the ground if it uh, moves beyond two and a half kilometers yeah, getting in close. I'm still higher than it. Doing another uh, correction to my uh, inclination here. Burning way too much fuel because I'm, I'm going too aggressively. But you know what? I can afford to do that right now. I have tons of fuel left. We're getting in closer. And 15 kilometers. We still have to do we're still way too far out. Excuse me while uh, old me messes around with the orbit relatively quickly. Yeah, I named this ship Destroyer in capital letters because, you know, having the capital letters it does make it seem more impressive, right? There we go. Now, where is it? Oh, it's getting closer. Um, not using that. You'll notice that it has a stack of RCS on the top, and I'm saving that until later. I'm going to just burn down the regular fuel right now. That's again, once again, we're going to try and get the inclination a little closer. You notice the, the mechanical jab has a few new buttons on the smart ASS. Those are for the orbital rendezvous operations. You can designate a putt target and the rendezvous module will give you some cues on how to get close. But uh, I'm getting close enough that I can probably make a burn more or less straight for it. I'm going to head downwards and... Once I get in close, we're back, of course, in normal, unaccelerated time. So it's a little less dizzy. 3.3, 3.2 kilometers, maybe. Just going to let this come in. You see, I'm more or less above it. And once we get in close, we'll, we'll hit the button to circularize the orbit. And uh, yeah, I've used uh, two tanks of fuel almost uh, rendezvousing with this thing. It's a good thing this isn't like any uh, of real uh, combat lasers that we have on Earth. The, the real combat lasers that have been put together are generally uh, gas. Um, they're, they're generally chemical lasers, right? And the idea behind a chemical laser is very similar to a rocket. You throw in two chemical elements together and uh, they form a plasma. But 
then what you do is you fire a laser of the correct tuned frequency through it and it amplifies the laser with a you know by bouncing back and forth between mirrors now the the common most common one i think that's used is a hydrogen fluoride that basically or hydrogen fluorine laser you basically mix those together and they produce this plasma but uh, it's a, an infrared laser which uh, gets heavily absorbed by the earth's atmosphere so i i see that a bunch of weaponized lasers are now using deuterium fluoride because that oh look at that eye there <laughs> i'm doing a lot of this flying with mech jab or oh, we're almost close enough yeah deuterium fluoride because deuterium's heavier and we're close enough let us fire because deuterium he is heavier the wavelength is shorter and so it actually passes through the atmosphere there we go target down Awesome. So now you see the power of this arms and operational rocket. Oh, yeah. And let's uh, go out and find some more things to shoot down. So uh, now we're getting, they're about nine kilometers out. We're just trying to get close to this item. The previous one was a leftover space probe, which um, it's kind of pointless that I shut it down because, of course, I could have just flown it back into the atmosphere using the autopilot. But, you know, we needed to shoot it down for science. It's very important being able to shoot things down for science. So coming in closer, again, another piece of debris from this uh, test uh, vehicle, which we launched. I, I actually used the interplanetary transfer vehicle because, if you remember, it had, like, eight space probes and it had... Um, a rocket it had the lander on top and it had fuel tanks so i had plenty of stuff left over from that so there we are we are in range let's uh target it let's take a look and see what we're about to shoot down oh yeah it's the little rcs stack so watch it bang one of the interesting things to notice and it'd be nice if they would fix this is that the explosions uh, are traveling at zero they, they, they basically are stops. When you're traveling at two kilometers per second, the explosions shoot off backwards and you don't get to see them fully develop. I think explosions should kind of follow physics depending upon where they are. Okay, so um, we're going to try and hook up with these this next one. And that'll just take a bit of a moment. Again, we're... Oh, yeah. Um, so we run out of fuel. And uh, what better opportunity since these things are closer... I can demonstrate that I don't just need to. Uh, I can use, I can use a uh, direct control over these lasers to actually try and shoot this. Now, instead of locking onto the item using the seven key, I can use you know eight, four, five, six, and rotate these manually. So let's try and uh, manually turn it and shoot this uh, thing. There we go. Unfortunately, because of the way they're mounted, they rotate independently. Um. Just going to try and adjust it, see if I can get it on top. Oh, oh, oh man. If this was combat, I would be dead. But oh, there we go. Almost, almost. Yeah, you see it just creates like a plasma cloud and then the thing overheats and explodes. So we have uh, four pieces of rocket here to destroy. Again, I can't fire continuously because I will overheat and then I will be without a laser almost and just pulsing it here okay just destroy the engine see it is possible to control these things manually and then uh one last piece almost it's pretty good considering i have absolutely no sighting or control over any any cues on how to aim this thing Okay, so now that we've dumped the tank, we're on RCS, and I'm getting a little more delicate with my maneuvering. Uh, you know, with a, f with a full RCS set up and a uh, patience, which uh, I don't have, you could probably take down everything in these orbits. I don't think there's anything particularly uh, difficult about their, their distribution of orbits. It just comes down to the fact that it takes a really long time, and I'm trying to make a video and get it out as quickly as possible. So there we are, we're almost like two and a half kilometers. We should be in range to start targeting this thing momentarily. And then soon it shall die. 2.4 kilometers. There we go. And uh, that basically indicates that we've locked on, but we are not in range. 
Oh, there we go. It seems to have a lock on. And in this case, it is a spent fuel tank. So this one, I legitimately could not have flown back to the surface. And so, yes, finally a test which demonstrates that this module is a success. But uh, for more entertaining purposes, you can actually shoot at live targets. I've set one next to the launch pad here, and it shall uh, target the rocket as it takes off. And uh, nice, you can watch stuff explode. I tried to shoot a plane, but uh, if you try to fly a plane around and at the wrong time, it basically um, it disappears magically. Anyway, I'm Scott Manley. Uh, I hope you get a chance to use this. Fly safe.